Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you Tidal Motion from Red Giant Universe 2.1. Tidal Motion is a plugin that allows you to quickly animate text and shapes within one consolidated interface. It's really useful for quickly creating titles, lower thirds, and graphic bugs. So let me jump in and show you how to use this. So there are a couple different workflows you can use with Tidal Motion. Let me show you the first one. This will be applying the effect directly to your video clip. So I've got a video clip in my timeline with nothing on it. I'll go to my effects and we will apply Tidal Motion. By default, you'll see the title right on top with its default shape. If I play through this, you'll see that it animates on and it will sit there for the duration of this video clip until the very end and then it'll animate away. What's going on here is that the timing of Tidal Motion defaults to using the length of the clip to which you've applied it. Now, if you'd like to change the duration, there's a couple different ways to do this. Now, a quick and easy way to do this would be to simply split this clip with a razor blade tool. So now I have two different clips, and at the very end of this first clip, this will simply animate away. However, if you'd like to do it right within the plugin, you can go to the effects controls here, and we'll look at the duration section of the plugin. So the duration of the transition that brings it on is right here, half a second. The idle duration is how long it will sit there. Now, for it to use this, we need to uncheck Use Clip Length. Now, if I set this to perhaps two seconds, this will animate on for half a second, sit there for two seconds, and then go away. Another benefit to applying the effect directly to the clip is when you are editing the text. Now, I'll get into this a lot more detail in just a few minutes, but one thing I want to note is that when we bring up the edit text window, this will actually composite it over the clip to which you've applied the effect. I can zoom in on this if I'd like to get a little bit more detail, and I can also pan around to look at my text. This is really handy if you want to reference the video for positioning and layout of your text. Okay, I'm going to remove this and I'll show you a different workflow. Now, different programs have different ways of using a blank clip. In Adobe Premiere, we have something called Black Video, which we can create simply by going to File, New, Black Video. In Adobe After Effects, this would be a solid, and other host apps have a different way of creating blank media, but basically, we just need something that doesn't do anything other than hold an effect. So I've got my Black Video here. I'll go to my Effects and drag and drop Title Motion on to this Black Video. Now I can see that this will animate on and go away at the end of the clip, but obviously I'm not seeing video track one in the background. In my effect controls, I'll simply go to composite over original and check that so it's not putting the title over the black video. This is a very flexible way of adjusting the timing and having your effect and video on two different tracks. The downside of this is that when I do go to that edit text window, we'll see the text and shape composited over the black video and not the video on track one. So for my example here, I'll apply title motion directly to the video clip and we'll do a simple title on top of this video. Okay, so let's hit edit text and look at one of the new text editors we've got for Red Giant Universe. Title motion takes a simple approach to creating titles. We've got line one and line two. This isn't paragraph text or screen text or anything like that. This is really meant for titles that have some sort of main title and subtitle, or perhaps a first and last name and job title, that kind of thing. So in this case, I'll make two different lines, and I can tab down to line two. These two different lines can have two totally different typefaces, size, tracking, color, and all that. We can also adjust a lot of this back in the effects controls. So I'm mainly going to do type selection and overall type layout in this window here. So we'll go here and we can also arrow through the different typefaces I have installed on my system. I can tap a letter to jump to a specific point in the list. So let's say I want Futura and we'll increase the size. Note that the icon next to the size, and anywhere you see an icon like this, is a scrubbable value. So I can click and hold and drag this up. So I'll make that quite a bit bigger. This crosshair right here allows me to reposition both line one and line two. I can adjust the relative spacing between line one and line two with the tracking right here. Notice that it's set to auto. So as I adjust line one, line two will adapt automatically. But if you'd like to set this manually, you can either enter a value or scrub right here and adjust the letting manually. 
So for this lower typeface, I'll set something like something like DIN condensed. I'll bring up the size, and I think we're good to go. So I'll hit OK, and we can see that we've got our title right in here. And if I hit play, this will pop on just like so. I'm going to use my little trick to have this go away in the middle of the clip. I think this is a really handy way of quickly shortening the length of your title. Now, before I move on to adjusting the shape, let's just take a quick look at the attributes available in the plugin itself. So we can adjust the font size, font color, opacity, and tracking right here within the effects controls. That means these are also animatable over time. I can adjust the manual offset in X and Y for this second line as well. Now note that the font itself, the actual typeface, is stored within the plugin settings itself and is not something you can animate or change here in the effect controls. We also have a drop shadow that is applied to your text, and it does what drop shadows do, which allows it to stand out a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the shape section. The shape section controls a very flexible shape generator that can do a multitude of things. There's a number of different shapes in here, such as a starburst, Simple circle, variable sided polygon, as well as the rounded rectangle that we're using right now. Now, note that we have size one and size two. Depending on the type of shape that you have selected, size one and size two will do different things. So, if I've selected the burst here and I increase the number of sides, size one will affect the outer radius of the burst and the Size 2 will affect the inner radius. However, if I've selected a rectangle, this will be the height and width. So depending on the type of shape you selected, size 1 and size 2 will do different things. Now for this, I'm actually going to take the fill away and just use a sort of thick stroke around the type. So to do this, I'll go to my fill color. Now in addition to the solid color, note that this can be also a radial or linear gradient. But I can also set it to none, and this will simply take away the fill and just leave the stroke. I'll go down to the stroke width and turn this up, and we've got our instant title. Notice that uh, we also have a rounding control for when you're using a rectangle. And if you're using something like a polygon, you can actually randomize the polygon points too if you want a bit of a scribble or random shape. I'm going to stick with my rounded rectangle and call this one good. So let's move on to a different example and start to do some more customization here. So in this example, I'll use black video clip, drop it right on top. And I'd like to get into the animation settings within title motion. So in my effect controls, let's uncheck composite over original. And under our presets here, I'll select one of these like triangle pop. So what this does is pop on, it's got a couple lines of text, and then at the end it simply pops right back off using some scale and rotation, and it's got a little bit of springiness as it lands. This is pretty close, but there's a number of things I don't like. I want to change the color, and I also don't like the fact that it is right on top of the face of the person that we are focusing on. Now, let's say I do like the animation itself, but I'd like to offset it a little bit. Now I mentioned I don't like the color, so I'm going to go in here to my solid color, Change this to perhaps a green. And I'd like to add a stroke to this. I'm going to turn up the overall opacity. But one thing I want to point out, because I have this on a separate track, I can go to the blending options for this and set this to a different blend mode. Now I mentioned I don't like this where it's placed, but I do like the actual animation. So one thing I really want to discourage you from doing is if you like the animation and you want to move things around all together, I really want to discourage you from reaching for the individual components and moving everything separately, such as the text and the shape position and all that. If you like how it looks and you want to move everything together, simply go down to the position offset and adjust the position offset and scale like so. So if I want to make this just a little bit smaller and offset over here, this will keep everything else together and relative to each other, including the animation. This is a much easier way to change things rather than going to your individual shape position and your text position. Another reason I want to discourage you from doing that is that there are some complications you'll run into if you have some extreme settings here. So let's say I do move this shape all the way over and notice that I'm starting to get some cropping over there on the left side. 
Now, fundamentally, how the plugin works is that it's taking everything that you've generated in terms of the text and the drop shadow and the shape, and it's taking that as one complete image and animating that image around. So if you think of this that I've generated right here, the triangle and the text as my source image, and I move it over to the left side where it's starting to get cropped on the left side of the screen, as this animates and does things, you'll see that the source image is actually going to be cropped. So that's another reason to really just try to keep it simple and use the position offset rather than moving things around manually. Okay, so let's do some more customization here. I haven't actually adjusted the text in here, so let's hop back into the text window and do some text adjustment. So I'll enter some text here. So I'll click on this and hit F. I'm gonna load in a Adobe Type Kit font and I'll bring up the size adjust the position a little bit. And down here, let's set this to a much tighter letting and for the typeface here, we'll stick with DIN condensed. So this is pretty much okay. I can do any fine tuning back in the effects controls. So I'll go over here and fine tune the line spacing. And in fact, I think line two needs to be a little bit bigger. At this point, if you want to change the animation, you can either manually adjust it yourself, or you can go back to the presets and look at the motion only section. This will load a different animation, but leave your text and shape alone. So if I click on, let's say, enter left, exit right, this will reload a new animation in here. We'll enter from the left, it will sit there, and at the end of the clip, it will exit to the right. So let's say you want to create something totally custom and on your own. The first thing I would suggest to do for the animation is to simply go to the presets and load a preset called None. This will reset all the animation settings so that nothing will change over time. And this is where we really dive into the animation engine and learn how this works. If you've used a plugin called Logo Motion before, the animation engine is exactly the same in Title Motion. We have a Start Property section, Idle Properties, and End Property sections. Start Properties define where it is when it begins. Idle properties are where it lands and sits, and the end properties are where it moves to at the very end of the animation. So there's three different sections to juggle, and this is one of the reasons it's good to simply work with a preset as a starting point. If you want to customize things on your own, one thing I would suggest trying is using this checkbox here called Match Start and End Values. Because there's three different sections to juggle, I figured it might be great if we can link the start properties and the end properties together, and that's exactly what that checkbox does. So with match start and end values checked, I will only have to change the start properties and not the end properties. These will basically mimic each other. So let's say I queue up to the beginning here and I set the scale start to 50 and the Y rotation to 180. And we'll set the opacity to zero. So at the beginning, it will animate from 50 from 180 and from zero. And at the end, it will animate back to 50 to 180 and to zero. And again, if I like that and I want to shift everything relative to each other, I can go to the position offset and move it over here. This will take everything together and keep the animation the same. If you want a different ending point versus the starting point, you would go into your duration, uncheck match start and end values, and go into the end properties here and manually define the end location. Now, one other cool thing we can do is idle animation. So rather than just sit there and do nothing, we have a lot of things that it can do while it sits. One thing we can do is have it pivot along its Y axis. So let's say in our presets here, I can select pivot Y, and this will do a 3D sort of pivot in its Y axis. Looks like it goes a little far, so I'll go to the pivot amplitude and dial down this, let's say, by half. So this will simply pivot back and forth as long as you have this clip running. So this will just automatically pivot back and forth. The same goes for hovering or wiggling. Wiggling is a bit more uh, random in nature. And you can mix and match these. So this can pivot and wiggle around at the same time. This can also have some springiness to it. So if I set the spring amplitude to, let's say, 40 and the spring frequency to a value of 2, this will take the animation values that it uses to animate in. So in this case would be the scale and the Y rotation. And as I hit play, we should see some scale and Y rotation wobble. And that's all automatic. It's a bit much that we've got going on here. So I'm going to just 
reset it to one of the presets here that is going to be the springy fast preset. In short, that is the extent of the animation section. Now, if you twirl everything open, you'll see quite a number of parameters, but just keep in mind that it is simply controlling where it's coming from, where it lands, and where it goes to. Those are the start, idle, and end stages of the animation. I've already covered all the position and scale here, but I'd like to talk about the anchor X and Y for one second here. So I'm gonna go back to my presets and reset the animation by going to none, and I'm going to set the shape to a rectangle. So I'm going to do a bit of a hinged animation here, so where, where it flips down, but not anchored from the center and anchored from the top. At the very bottom, we have anchor X and Y, and this is really what it's for. Anchor X and Y allow you to change the point at which it will either rotate or scale. So if I go to the very beginning of the clip, which I should still see it because it has no animation right now, and if I go to the start properties and go to the X rotation, and if I change this, you'll see that it is hinging or anchoring by its center point. In fact, let's make this a little bit bigger. I'll go into the size 2 and set this to 200. So I'll set this to, let's say, 180. And as I hit play, this will flip down like that. But what I'm going for is more of a hinged animation where it hinges from its top and flips down like it's a, a sign attached by chains or something. So at the very bottom under anchor XY, I will move this so that the overall shape moves up to where that center point used to be. And if I hit play, this will now hinge down like so. I need to adjust this just a little bit. Now, if I've moved it overall a little too far, I can go back into the position offset and shift this back up. Now, because this is a hinge, it would be really great if we could actually have a bit of wobble in here, which we can do. So let's go into the idle properties and we'll add some springiness to this. So let's go to the idle properties and under the animation preset, I'll set this to springy fast. In fact, I'm going to bring up this spring amplitude a bit. Now, obviously, it's still there at the very first frame, so let's go to the start properties and set this opacity start to zero. There we go. Lastly, at the bottom, we've got a motion blur section, and it's a pretty universal rule that motion blur is a trade-off between quality and playback speed. So you can keep this down at a low quality, or even you can get away with, in my experience, a medium quality with a dial-down shutter, and this will generally play back almost real time. So those are the ins and outs of Tidal Motion. I hope you find it very useful. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you soon.